Let's talk about the three address spaces that are provided by PCI. The first is required and it's the configuration address space, which I said is the main thing we're gonna care about and what we're trying to get to. The next is a optional PCI memory mapped IO address space. And then there is a optional port IO address space. And we'll see as we progress how exactly these are set up. But it's really up to the vendor to decide whether or not they need these. So we had these diagrams before, CPUs, PCHs, and then a peripheral connected via PCIe, such as a network interface card. And we saw that these were in some memory mapped IO space that was stealing some physical address range, and therefore you couldn't get to the RAM at that address range, you would just talk to some particular peripheral. So let's extend this a little bit so we can put some more information in there. And what I have to say first is that with the configuration address space, there is going to be some number of bus device functions worth of configuration address space. And so we learned a second ago that there's up to 256 buses, 32 devices, and eight functions available for indexing in the PCI architecture. So there will be bus zero, device zero, function zero, and that will have 256 bytes of this configuration address space. So 256 bytes accessible via memory mapped IO or port IO. I'm kind of going to be showing it as if it's memory mapped IO here, but it can also be port IO. And so that's just one of the many devices that are accessible 256 bytes at a time. So that's bus zero, device zero, function zero, and then you get bus zero, device zero, function one, function two, etc. device one, function zero, all the way up through bus 255, device 31, and function seven. So potentially all of these things can be mapped into memory mapped IO space or uh, port IO space, although they don't necessarily all have to be if, you, if the system designers wanna make sure that they don't steal so much of the physical address space. So we'll see a little bit about the configurability of that later. Now, we're going to introduce Miss Frizzle. For those of you who don't know Miss Frizzle, she is a children's educator, a passionate advocate of STEM education. She's from a children's show called The Magic School Bus, where basically they would have a magic school bus that would shrink and grow and have a variety of other magical properties. So it could, you know, go in the human bloodstream or go into outer space. But, you know, she's a wild and wacky character, and I don't know exactly how I ended up finding this particular picture. I think I was probably searching for bus driver, and then her picture came up, and I decided that, you know, she would be a perfect person to guide us through these lands and many others. So let's say we have a device driver, a bus driver, or just a device driver, and we're going to say this is the device driver for this particular network interface card, right? So some particular card from... Broadcom or 3Com or Intel, you know, there's a bunch of different hardware makers who make NICs and each of them is going to potentially have to have a device driver because there's not necessarily a standard that all network interface cards follow. So that device driver is going to need to know how to talk to this device over PCIe in order to configure and control it, set it up for proper operation, and in the case of network cards, know how to send packets to it and get packets back from it. So take this 256, we're going to say, you know, let's say that was, you know, bus six function zero device, uh, bus zero, bus six device zero function zero, 256 bytes of configuration address space. So Miss Frizzle gets the bouncing ball, sends some sort of instruction, could be in this case a memory mapped IO, could be a port IO, sends an instruction that's going to interface with this configuration address space. Instruction decoder down to memory controller, we saw before for memory mapped IO versus normal RAM access. Instruction decoder is gonna make a choice, where does it map to, how is it routed? In this case, it's gonna be routed down to the PCH and over to the PCIe connected uh, device. And then when it reaches that device, again, as we said before, the device interprets it however it feels like. And so let's say that this particular access goes and pokes some registers on the internal uh, configuration, internal processor of that device. Upon poking those registers, that can cause the device to set up a, another chunk of memory mapped I.O. So this would be a to be determined number of bytes of NIC memory map I.O. space. So this is sort of the second configuration, I'm sorry, this is the second address space that's available. There's the config address space, and then we said optionally, there could be a memory mapped I.O. space. This is required, this is optional. And then optionally, the you know access to the registers internally could have also mapped 
a to be determined number of bytes available in a port IO address space. And so these are the three address spaces that a PCI device could have. I guess I showed this as a PCI network card. Let's you know pretend that E is not there and just say it's a PCI device. So these are the you know things that then the device driver can interface with in order to, for instance, feed you know packets into the device in order to make it you know send and receive packets. They could interact with port I/O space if one exists. They can interact with a memory mapped I/O space if one exists or maybe the particular device just needs config space. In this case, for a NIC card, they probably need some sort of memory map space so that they can hand off packets back and forth between the main processor and the NIC. So count them. One, two, three address spaces. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, people internal to Apple, I know I already used that joke before, but I like the joke, so I'm gonna go with the count. So let's go ahead and jump in and understand the first of those address spaces, the configuration address space. Time for a lab to go and see those 256 bytes, which we said are the main things we really, really care about in the context of PCI. 